One of the most interesting things in water is that we're now discovering things in our drinking water supplies that are surprising us. We've discovered pharmaceuticals in the drinking water in many urban cities in the United States. Uh, we've also discovered that pesticides and herbicides are all leaching into both groundwater and municipal water supplies. So we've had years of chemical use and more and more chemicals and now we're finding those in municipal supplies. One of the problems is there is very few methods for removing any of these newer organic chemicals from water. They're very difficult to get out. They're very small molecules so they don't filter. Uh, so the pyrolytics technology that actually destroys them is one of the few solutions available right now. Pyrolytics technology was invented by Mark Owen, the CEO, current CEO of Pyrolytics. Pyrolytics has developed a new technology for water purification, which is environmentally friendly, low cost to operate, and removes all classes of contaminants from water without wasting any water in the process. The process uses digital controllers and solid state power supplies to power LEDs, which drive a patent pending photochemical purification system. This system incorporates five photochemical processes that kill microorganisms, break apart contaminants like pesticides, pharmaceuticals, and petrochemicals, and remove heavy metals. Inside the system is a mesh which is coated with a nanotechnology coating. When excited by LED light, these five photochemical processes are activated and chemicals and germs are permanently destroyed. As we look to the future, our freshwater supply on the planet is pretty much finite and there is extreme scarcity in some regions. There is pollution that is making supplies unusable in some regions and there are political ramifications of this shortage of water. One of the benefits of Pyrolytics uh, is that some of the water that is no not usable today can be made useful with the Pyrolytics technology. And one of the interesting products that's been first developed with the Pyrolytics technology is called the solar bag. And in the solar bag, we have what we call a tea bag that is filled with the photocatalytic material. This product weighs only about 90 to 100 grams, so you could put many of them in storage for a disaster or emergency preparedness. You can ship them via helicopter into a situation, or they could be used in a remote village for up to six months purifying water. To use it, you basically can fill the, the bag with water from any source. This is very bad pond water that has been filled actually through two layers of a sari cloth to fill the bag. And if when you put this in the sunlight, within two hours in direct sunlight or four hours on a cloudy day, the water would be clean enough to drink and all of the heavy metals and organics would be destroyed and the germs and viruses, bacteria would be reduced by 99.99%. So this is very effective and very convenient, and we believe you'll see these in uh, recreational stores in America or in aid agencies throughout the world in the near future. Our first electrically powered unit, the Shield 500, employs a vast surface area of photocatalyst, probably more than several football fields worth of surface area, and very intense ultraviolet light, probably 10 times more intense than the sun in specific wavelengths, to purify water in an industrial commercial environment, wastewater, gray water, various other applications, plus drinking water. This product can enable water reuse in areas where water is scarce. It can enable much purer wastewater discharge than current technology. It can provide drinking water in places that need extensive purification before water can be consumed. The shield is meant to be a very easy product to use um, where you can just hook up a feed line and a product line um, and run the system continuously without having to monitor it. 
So if you can imagine this is a fresh water stream and this is the water you want to get out of a contaminated water source, uh, you can imagine that there might be some organic contaminants in there. You can imagine that there would be some heavy metals and also bacteria and virus. So you can see this is our dirty water source and we can leave the system on continuously and begin to process water. Now this is a 500 gallon a day unit which can put out just a little bit over one liter per minute um, in water. If the water flow were to ever stop then the temperatures of the water and the LEDs are monitored, self-monitored by the, by the shield system. Uh, and it will recognize that and turn the lights off after a short period of time to prevent um, overusing the energy. There's a lot of research going on into converting wastewater into energy. Um, OSU and other people have been doing microbial fuel cells uh, in the laboratory. You know, that's probably 15, 20 years away from application. You know, I think it needs platinum, which is very expensive. And wastewater's got lots of stuff in it, uh, just straining everything out to get a clean sample of sewage to feed into a complicated machine is, is, is tough. One of the things we do here is we take the sludge and we anaerobically digest it and it produces methane gas. And we have a 500 kilowatt generator that generates electricity from the methane gas. We take heat from the engine and heat from the exhaust and we use that to heat the sludge to get it right up to the temperature that it needs to be to digest. Um, so that's feeding electricity back into our plant so we're not buying as much electricity. I think it's around $700 a day of uh, power we generate. Clean Water Service is a wastewater utility for most of Washington County, the urban incorporated areas. We have a very stringent phosphorus permit limit, so we're looking at ways to capture phosphorus non-traditionally that would be much more green than using uh, chemicals to precipitate out the phosphorus. So we looked at the OSTAR process. Uh, we did a pilot here, uh, tested it out, did some research, visited the only full-scale pilot, and found out that it would be a good match for us. And so we have the first full-scale nutrient recovery plant in the United States, uh, where we're capturing phosphorus and ammonia that would normally be recycled back to the treatment plant to be retreated. We're capturing it and converting it into uh, struvite, which is sold as crystal green, uh, it's a nice dry odorless fertilizer pellet or prill that uh, has significant value because it releases its nutrients slowly. In the last couple of years there's been a lot of uh, increased interest in phosphorus. It's a limited nutrient, uh, it's mined and then has to be reacted with sulfuric acid and ammonia and shipped long distances. The price went from $250 a ton to $1,200 a ton recently. China stopped exporting. It's, they see it as a strategic mineral because if you don't have phosphorus, you can't grow food. And you can't make phosphorus out of anything else. It's the phosphorus element. And so we've been mining phosphorus, using it, and then dumping it into the rivers and into the ocean. And we're not able to get it back out of the ocean. So the Ostara process captures the phosphorus in the wastewater plant and captures it in a really nice form that the farmer can immediately recognize as fertilizer. It's a dry pellet, uh, looks like the rest of his fertilizer, and it's a slow release fertilizer. So in a container nursery, they have the plants grown in pots with sand, sawdust, bark dust like that. If you put regular fertilizer in there, it'll dissolve and go into the groundwater. If you put a slow release fertilizer in there, it'll stay in the plant pot and slowly be released as the plant needs it. This stuff can last six to nine months uh, in soil. All the sludges we produce here are anaerobically digested. We capture the methane and generate electricity. When we squeeze the water out of the sludge, that water we call centrate, and it has to go back to the head of the plant to be retreated. Now with the OSTAR process, we take that centrate that's full of ammonia and it's full of phosphorus. Instead of taking it back to the plant to be retreated a second time, we take it down to the OSTAR reactor. So, this dirty looking water here um, has lots of dissolved nutrients in it. When we add the magnesium to it, we get a precipitation reaction where it's, because it's not soluble in water. And in the Imhoff cone there, the reaction happens instantaneously so you get microscopic 
articles of struvite. Those aren't worth anything. They're just struvite sludge. You'd have to pay to get rid of it. What the Ostara reactors do by the rapid mixing and churning in the bottom of the reactors and in the controlled conditions, it basically makes a pearl where you start with a small particle and it just keeps building layer upon layer upon layer and making larger and larger prills. And then we harvest those off the bottom. We sweep them in with some water up into a dewatering screen where the water is separated from the prills and it's fed into a dryer. It dries the surface water. When they're dried, they spill out onto a screen that sorts them out into the four different size products that we want. And it's ready for use there. There's no post-processing. And in spite of that water looking kind of dirty, these pearls come out you know, white as rice. They come out really clean, odorless, dustless, um, very nice product. From the warehouse here, a truck will come up and pick up this load of 20 tons. And when we put it on the truck, then it's Ostara's responsibility. They're doing all the marketing and distribution. Ostara was a company in Vancouver, British Columbia. They got technology from the University of British Columbia uh, where they were trying to figure out how to make struvite in a positive way. Struvite can be a real nuisance in treatment plants. It can plug up pipes and everything. Um, and UBC saw that it had value as a fertilizer. And so they did a lot of testing in the university and came up with the patent for the process. And then Ostara licensed that process from University of British Columbia and went out and tried to market it. And we were the first to do it full scale um, with the whole system. And we've been pretty happy. We're making, uh, goal is to make a little over a ton a day, which would be one of these bags a day. And we're not only reducing the amount of chemicals we need to treat the water, uh, we're also getting revenue from the product that we're making. So it's, it's a win-win. It, it saves us costs in one hand and it provides us revenue in another hand.